While doctors have rights, they also have special responsibilities as members of the profession. They are primarily healers and have the knowledge and expertise to provide care and treatments that individuals cannot access without their participation. They are not simply contracted to provide medicines or surgery, but have a, profe have a position of trust in the communities they serve. With this position comes a set of responsibilities that goes beyond the fulfillment of tasks and the adherence to the law. They are therefore instrumental in protecting the right to health of every individual. As described in Article 25 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, everyone has the right to a standard of living adequate for the health and well-being of himself and his family, including food, clothing, housing and medical care. The Constitution of the World Health Organization further states that the enjoyment of the highest attainable standard of health is one of the fundamental rights of every human being, without distinction of race, religion, political belief, economic or social condition. In order for persons to access this highest attainable standard of health, doctors must conduct themselves in a, matter, in a manner that encourages health-seeking behaviour, in accordance with professional ethical standards. When people seek help from doctors, they are often fearful, in pain or otherwise vulnerable, and doctors should conduct themselves in a manner that best serves their needs, with compassion, moral integrity, respect for their personhood and humility. While there is often a financial element to the interaction between a doctor and a patient, the relationship should not be seen as merely a transactional one, and financial gain should not be the primary motivation for the doctor. The law sets a minimum standard for the conduct of doctors. The SMC, the professional regulatory body, provides guidance on what constitutes good conduct and ethical practice. While the SMC ethical code and ethical guidelines are not legal documents, they may form part of the standard to which a doctor is held when his practice is challenged in court. The SMC also has a disciplinary role in reviewing complaints and has the power to censure, impose fines, suspend practitioners or even remove them from the register. The professional responsibilities of a doctor may be described with reference to the SMC ECEG and are derived in large part from the four principles of medical ethics, which shall guide our discussion here. Autonomy is the right to self-determination, and in this context, the right to make decisions about one's own health. The emphasis on respect for a patient's autonomy in the practice of medicine today is a departure from the medical paternalism of the past. One way to act on this is to use the model of shared decision-making in which patients are empowered by doctors and collaborate with them on decisions rather than being simply told what is best for them. The principle of autonomy is especially relevant in the context of healthcare professional responsibilities around capacity, confidentiality and informed consent. Respecting a patient's autonomy also means respecting a patient's right to have control over information about themselves. This means that information disclosed within a context of a doctor-patient relationship generally should not be disclosed to others without the patient's consent. Confidentiality is essential to maintain trust in the doctor-patient relationship. It encourages disclosure and in particular allows people to seek help for sensitive or stigmatized conditions. There are other good reasons to respect confidentiality. Patients experience consequences when their information is released without their consent. When this involves particularly sensitive or even stigmatized information, they may experience shame or damage in their personal relationships or even their professional relationships. There may also be consequences such as loss of employment or legal action taken against them for information that they did not intend to become public. When confidentiality is breached, patients can take action against the doctor. And if failure to respect confidentiality becomes widely known, then this may cause the public to lose trust in the profession, creating a barrier to accessing healthcare needs. There are exceptions to confidentiality in the context of the doctor-patient relationship. Disclosure without consent may occasionally be required by law. In Singapore, some pertinent laws are the Misuse of Drugs Act and the Infectious Diseases Act. 
The limits of confidentiality with minors sometimes is based on a need to safeguard their future and a recognition that it may be in their best interests to involve their caregivers, be it parents or court-appointed guardians. Disclosure may also be justified in the public interest or in order to protect a third party from harm. This is only permissible under very strict circumstances, when there is a high likelihood of serious harm to the party, when disclosure is likely to prevent that harm, and when there is no other way to prevent that harm. When those situations, when those conditions have been established, the doctor should disclose only the minimum amount of information that is necessary to prevent harm and only the, to the persons who are capable of preventing that harm. Disclosure is also sometimes necessary in the best interests of the patient, such as when there is a high immediate risk of self-harm. From the SMC ECEG, you must have sound justifications if you decide to disclose patients' information without consent. Care should also be taken to avoid accidental breaches of confidentiality, for example, through discussion of a patient's information in public spaces. Respect for autonomy also means that decisions about investigations and treatment can only be made by the patient as long as they have the capacity to do so. It is the doctor's responsibility to provide information necessary to make that decision and to do so in a manner that facilitates understanding. The doctor should act with integrity and should avoid manipulating information even if it is just to persuade the patient to make a certain decision that they think is best. The shared decision-making model allows patients to participate in decision-making to the extent that they are comfortable. Respecting a patient's autonomy also means respecting their informed refusal of what a doctor considers beneficial treatment. Now we come to the principles of beneficence and non-maleficence, that is, the obligations to do good and to minimize harm, which can often, become, which can often be considered together. The principles of maleficence and non-maleficence are set out here in the SMC Ethical Code, saying that doctors should uphold patients' welfare and best interests as their highest consideration, and they should endeavour to ensure that patients are not harmed or that they suffer minimal harm for maximal possible benefit. We must then consider how potential harm can be avoided or limited before making decisions about what is in the patient's best interest. If patients have the capacity to make their own decisions, doctors should advise on what they consider to be in the patient's best interest and allow the patient to make an autonomous, informed decision. When caring for patients who do not have the capacity to make their own decisions, doctors may need to make those decisions in their best interest in accordance with the guidelines of the Mental Capacity Act. The doctor's duty to act in accordance with the principle of beneficence should also be considered when a patient leaves their care. They should do what they can to ensure that the patient receives continued competent care, such as making a referral to another physician, continuing in care until they are seen by that physician, and providing a note with relevant information unless the patient requests otherwise. The fourth principle, the principle of justice, requires that doctors practice within the existing laws and that they maintain fairness in considering the allocation of scarce resources and that they do not discriminate on the basis of irrelevant patient characteristics. The doctor should always first be an advocate for his patients but should still not use resources irresponsibly when they are not indicated or will not be beneficial to the patient. Ideally, a doctor would not have the responsibility to both ration scarce resources at the same time as look after his patient, although this occasionally does happen. In such a situation, from the SMC ECEG, doctors should strive to use resources efficiently and balance their duty of care to patients with their duty of care to the community and the wider population. The principle of justice also prohibits discrimination based on characteristics that should not have a bearing on the decision at hand. Most, if not all people, hold unconscious biases, that is, implicit tendencies to prefer one group over another based on stereotypes and other learned associations. The role of these biases in clinical care is increasingly being recognized, as is the fact that they may contribute to worse health outcomes for people with certain characteristics. Such biases are difficult to change, the subject may be approached 
with a commitment to humility and self-awareness and a willingness to engage with the perspectives of people who have different experiences from one's own. From the ECEG, doctors should provide access to good medical care and treat patients without unfair discrimination, prejudice or personal bias against any characteristic of these patients. Examples of such characteristics are gender, race, religion, creed or social or economic standing, disability or sexual orientation. Doctors should refrain from allowing moral biases or prejudices to affect a patient's well-being even when a patient's moral values or decisions differ from their own.